How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 16 in my QBasic tutorial series. And I'm just going to say right away, this will probably be the last video for this series. I've pretty much covered everything I want to go over. The only thing I want to do, which is what we're going to be doing in this video, is tie everything together, take all the stuff I've taught you, put it together in one program, and to do that we're going to be making a number guessing game. So open up QB64 and I've already created this file called guess.bas. And let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to print out a message welcoming the user to our game. So welcome to the number guessing game. Now we're going to sleep our program for one second. We're gonna then going to print out another message. And this one's going to say, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100 and this time we're going to sleep for two seconds so we just welcome the user to our game the sleep statements are to put a little bit pause between print statements next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a couple variables so the first one is going to be called guesses this variable is going to keep track of the number of guesses the users had we're going to set this equal to zero Next one is going to be lives, which we're going to set equal to 15. The, we're going to give our user a maximum of 15 guesses to guess the number. If they don't guess it, well, then they die, I guess. The game ends. They lose. So now we're going to ask the user what they think the number is. So input. and we're going to ask the user uh, to pick a number between 1 and 100 so please guess a number between 1 and 100 and we're going to call this one guess and we're not going to put a dollar sign there just to let the QBasic compiler know that we are expecting a number there now the one thing I forgot which is actually very important is we need our random number first of all. So we first got to make a randomized timer. So randomize timer. And now we're going to create a random number. We're going to call it num and we're going to set it equal to int. And then inside the brackets rnd all capitals times 100 outside the brackets plus 1. So I went over this in the random number tutorial but just again for anyone who missed it. We create a randomized timer, which here, this R&D, um, is going to choose some random number between 0 and 1. So it's going to be a decimal. Multiply it by 100. That number is then rounded to an integer. So an integer has no decimal places. So it's either rounded up or rounded down to the next whole number. And at 1 is added to that. So basically, what this does is going to create some random number. The lowest value can be is 1. Highest value it can be is 100. So we now have our random number. And we've now asked the user for a guess. We want to know what number they think it is. Okay, let's go to the next line and the first thing we have to do is we have to increment the number of guesses. So guesses equals guesses plus one. They've had their first guess so at this point they'll have a uh, one guess. Now next thing we want to do is make sure they entered a valid number. So if guess is less than um, uh, 0 or guess is greater than 100 well then we are going to say oops forgot the then then we're going to tell the user we're going to print out invalid input all in capitals and with a bunch of exclamation points to really emphasize it and then we'll say guess again okay now next thing we're gonna do is we are going to uh, go to this line up here so instead of just you know creating another input statement we can just reuse that one so go to and we're gonna call 
this line up here one that's what we're gonna label it as so one colon now back down here only thing I gotta do now to get rid of that error is end our if statement so end if so right here we're going to check to see if it's a valid number it's not a valid number so we are going to go back up here ask the user for another number so let's run this just to see what we got so far welcome to the number guessing game I think of a number between 1 and 100 please guess a number between 1 and 100 well let's guess 0 to be f first of all so if guess is less than oops an error there if guess is less than 1 is what we want it as Now let's run this. That was just my fault. So we guessed one. That was okay. But now if we guess zero, invalid input, please guess another number. Let's guess 1200 this time or 1300. I accidentally hit the three instead of the two. All right. Now let's guess 50. That'll be a valid number. So our program will end there. Only thing I want to do here, a couple things I noticed that weren't visually appealing. Um, right up here I'm just going to put a colon after the 100 and then a space and then the one thing I forgot to do is let's put another sleep after the number guess so sleep for one second now one thing we can do we're going to check for you know if this um value is true or not next thing we're gonna do is once we get past that we know that we have a valid number so we're gonna do another uh, condition so else if we are going to see if the guess is equal to our random number so if else if guess equals num then we're gonna print out Congratulations. I cannot spell. I'm a computer science student, not a English one. Congratulations. Okay, I really can't spell. Wow. Okay, so congratulations. Um you guessed the number in guesses so we're gonna put a colon there so we can append guesses to our string so in guesses guesses all right so let's check this now uh, actually no there's no point checking it yet what we're gonna do after we get outside of this if statement we are going to go back to one Welcome to the number guessing game. Think of a number between 1 and 100. So let's do 50. Uh, guess a number between 1 and 100. Um, how about, you know, 75? It would be at this point just chance if we got the right number. So how we're going to make this easier on a user is we're going to do an else statement. So once we get to this point, we're going to know that it's a valid number, but we're also going to know that it's not equal to the random number. So inside this else, we are going to do another if statement. So if um, if the number is greater than the guess, well then, we're going to print out that the guess is too low. Sorry about that, just want to get rid of an error that we had. So, we're going to print out your guess was too low 
try again. And now we are going to um, do the same thing um, except for else. And the print statement's going to say, you know, your guess was too high. Okay, that's our print statement. So we're checking here if it's too high or too low. So now let's keep going until we actually get the number. Let's keep playing the game until we get the number just to make sure that that much is working. So I'm thinking number between 1 and 100. Let's cut it right in half and go for 50. Your guess was too low. Try again. So let's cut it half again. 75. Guess was too low. Let's do 87. Too low. Okay, 94 maybe. Congratulations, you get the number in four guesses. Was that right? One, two, three, four? Yep, that's right, four guesses. But it's going to keep going again, and the same number is going to be 94. All right, so we got a pretty basic game going right now, but we still have some improvements to make. Uh, okay, we're 11 minutes in, so I'm going to try to hurry it up a bit here. Now, next thing we're going to do is at the end of this if statement, we are going to do another check. Uh, actually, we should probably do that beforehand. Uh, we're going to check to see if they have enough lives left. So if lives equals zero, then we are going to end our game. So all we're going to type out is end. And to keep our program intact, we're going to change this into an else if. All right. Now the only thing we have to do to incorporate the lives is up here where we take add one to guesses. We also take one away from lives. So lives equals lives minus one. And uh, I just want to make sure there's nothing else I'm missing. How about if they have no lives less, we'll also print a message. Um, so we're going to print out, sorry, but you ran out of lives. We'll put a you know, frowny face. And then we'll say, better luck next time. Okay. Uh, so that takes care of all those conditions. Now, let's incorporate the clear screen. So at the end of each turn, we have a fresh screen. So CLS. We'll clear the screen after each turn. Uh, okay, I'm just making sure there's nothing else I'm forgetting here. So we've incorporated our guesses at lives and let me know if you got the right number or not. Okay. That seems all right. Now, uh, guess the number. We sleep it. Okay. That all seems all right. The only thing we're going to do here. Before we clear the screen, we're going to sleep it just to give the user a time to read the message before it's taken away from them when we clear the screen there. Actually, maybe we'll give them three seconds just to make sure that they've read it. So here we go. Welcome to the number guessing game. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Please guess a number between 1 and 100. Let's start with 50. Guess was too low. Try again. Uh, let's put an invalid number in now. Invalid number. Guess again. Let's put in another invalid number. Okay, let's put it in the right one now. So I can't remember if it said that 50 was too high or too low. Let's just put in 75. Your guess was too low. Try again. Let's go with 87. Your guess was too low. Try again. Um, how about 
94. Guess was too high. Try again. 92, maybe. Guess was too high. 90. All right, so we got it in eight guesses. Now, only thing we have to do is it automatically takes us back to the start of the game. So if the user guesses the number right, we are going to do uh, um, a do while loop, or I guess a do until loop. So do uh, loop until. So what we want to do here is we're going to ask the user for input. Uh, input. Do you want to play again? And then we're going to put here y dash n. And we're going to save this in a variable called again. Put a dollar sign to let QBasic know we're expecting a string. And what we're going to do, we're going to keep looping this until again equals y or again equals n. Um, once it equals one of those two values, we're going to do an if statement. So if we uh, get, so if again equals y, well then, we're going to go back to the start. So we're going to create that label called start in a minute. The only thing I want to do is finish off this if statement block. So we're going to create an else. Else, we're going to end the game. And we're going to end our end if here. Uh, line 21. Oops. All right. We forgot to put the dollar sign after again. There, that fixes everything. Now all we got to do is go back up here. We're going to create a variable called start. What this is going to do, it's going to start our program fresh all over again. And then... uh create a new random number so it's going to be a completely new game and where is it um, right here every time they uh, guess a number we're going to clear the screen as well okay that should be all we have to do for this entire game all right I know it's been a long video and I apologize for that but we are done now let's just run it one last time Think of a number between 1 and 100. Uh, let's do 50. Um, I didn't see there. I wasn't paying attention if it was too high or too low. I guess it was too high. Okay, let's. I'm just going to go back to 50 because I didn't see what it said. All right, 50 was too high, so let's go to 25. I guess it was too high. Uh, let's go to 12. I guess it was too high. Okay, let's go to 6. Too low, let's go to 9. Too low, let's go to 11. Alright, that was the right one. Now, let's just type in some invalid. So let's just type in yes. It's going to keep asking us until we type in Y or N. If we type in Y, it'll start the game all over again. Now let's just make sure, we'll type in 11 again to make sure it's not the same number. So there we go. We have a new random number, a completely new game. That is how you make a number guessing game in QBasic. Now, I'm going to save this and exit out, and I'll show you something. If you exit out here, inside wherever you save your .bas file, there's now going to be a program in here, in my case, called guess.exe. You can keep that file, drag it somewhere, double-click on it whenever you want. It'll launch your program. So you now have a program that you can use across multiple different computers, share with your friends, stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully the entire tutorial series. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed it. Remember to leave a comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.